Hi, I'm Molly Dave. How many of you think you have the highest willpower? And how many of you think you can resist any temptation? Now, we all like to think we are highly resistant towards our impulses and have complete control over them. But the problem comes in when we overestimate those abilities. This overestimation of our abilities towards our temptations is called the restraint bias. I'm a psychology major at the Ryder University and learning more about the human behaviors and tendencies always intrigues me. Our minds can trick us into believing uh, many things like how much control we actually have over our temptations and what our limitations are. Uh, being biased about our restraining abilities is our, one of those beliefs. So having knowledge about the restraint bias is important to avoid overexposure of temptations which can lead to poor decision making. I'm going to talk about how the restraint bias promotes addiction and relapse and how important awareness is uh, as well as how it increases impulsive behavioral tendencies. Now let's start off how it impacts addiction and relapse. The senior lecturer of management and organization of the Kellogg School, Lauren Nordgren said, people are not good at anticipating the power of their urges and those who are confident about their self-control are those most likely to give into their temptations. For example, somebody who thinks that taking a little bit of heroin or cocaine will not result in addiction are most likely those people who will put themselves in situations where they will take uh, these kind of drugs and unfortunately end up in the world of addiction. I was recently watching this MTV reality show called The Hills where this teenager, Stephanie, a recovering um, alcoholic and drug addict, kept putting herself in tempting situations. Like she kept on going to multiple parties a week and expected herself to uh, stay sober. Unfortunately, that didn't work out for her because within a few weeks, she uh, was arrested for a DUI. Studies have shown that smokers, recovering smokers, uh, who believe that they had uh, extremely high impulse control, exposed themselves to more temptations, which resulted in higher rates of relapse four months later. The second point I'm going to talk about is the importance of awareness towards the restraint bias. In the Odyssey, Odysseus is aware of uh, how the sirens and chanting voices uh, can lure him in and unfortunately end uh, in his and his crew's deaths. So what he did was he uh, put beeswax in his crew's ears so they couldn't hear their voices and asked them to tie him up uh, around the ship so he couldn't get to the uh, sirens uh, even if he could hear their enchanting voices. So when you're trying to work through something that uh, requires a lot of restriction, like practicing healthier eating habits, it's, it's really important that you first and foremost are aware of how difficult it will be and that you will have to take extra measures in order to uh, be consistent uh, with those uh, healthy eating habits. Like don't go to Starbucks every other day or every day and expect not to buy uh, a mocha. Um, that's really unhealthy. Um, don't expect to go to your favorite bakery and not buy your favorite chocolate chip cookie because you will eventually end up buying it and it will backfire on all the hard work uh, you did uh, previously. So now that I've talked about the importance of awareness, let's move on to how the restraint bias increases uh, impulsive behavioral tendencies. Approximately 60 million Americans have an ongoing outstanding credit card balance. Now there are many reasons why we are in situations like uh, credit card debt, but one of the reasons is, uh, does have to do with the restraint bias. 
sometimes we think we have control over our spending uh, abilities, but uh, we always overspend many times, like in stores or online stores, um, <clears throat> which is why it's important that we know that this is going to happen. Now, many times what happens is you you'll go window shopping and just think that you'll just take a look at your favorite dress and not want to buy it because you have complete control over uh, your temptations. But you end up buying shoes and dresses that you don't want all the time. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, another uh, thing that always comes to mind when I talk about the research bias is the effect of Target on how people spend. Now Target is that one store where I can definitely speak for many people like me that you end up going to buy one thing and you buy like 10 things that you didn't really need or weren't on your grocery list. Uh, and there's these funny tweets about uh, such situations like, I ran into Target to buy pencils and ended up spending $250. Uh, someone else wrote, my wife hates snakes but if they sold snakes, if Target sold snakes, then we'd probably own a few snakes. Now, you know, this all may seem funny, but these kinds of ten spending tendencies uh, can result in very unhealthy habits and further, you know, poor decision making. In conclusion, having knowledge about the restraint bias is important in order to avoid overexposure of temptations. These temptations can lead to poor decision making and negative uh, tendencies, which can be avoided or at least restricted if we keep ourselves aware uh, of the measures that can be taken in order to do so. I know it's difficult to accept the fact that we are not in complete control of our temptations and we do ha have our limitations, but if we accept this and we are aware that we do have limitations, this would be uh, our strength and not our weakness. So thank you so much for listening and I hope you learn more about the restraint bias.